Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging field of data science. We bring the best minds in data, software engineering, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now here are your hosts, Frank Lavinia and Andy Leonard. Hello and welcome back to Data Driven, the podcast where we focus on the emerging fields of machine learning, data science and artificial intelligence. If you'd like to think of data as the new oil, then you can consider us Car Talk, because we focus on where the rubber meets the virtual road. And with me on this epic trip down the information superhighway, as always, is Andy Leonard. How's it going, Andy? Hey, Frank, it's going well. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Today did not have an auspicious start. Oh, no. But uh, su- su- such are Mondays, right? Uh, true. Very true. We are recording this Monday, July 16th, just in case you're wondering. That's true. So you've got some some big stuff coming up. I know you've got some travel ahead. You've been crazy busy. What's going on with you, Frank? So I've been working on the capstone project for the AI uh, engineer certification um, that I've not had the time. I've just been so busy. Um, usually Microsoft, um, you know, the turn of the fiscal year was July 1st, and yeah. usually it's kind of a quiet summer. Yeah. Um, that's not the case anymore, <laughs> at least in my division. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm excited. One would say super excited because I'm headed out, uh, to ready this week, which is an internal kind of training conference. Nice. Um, uh, there was a glitch in what they told me. So it actually, for me, it started today. So they have like all these like deep dives into AI and ML, uh, that I'm missing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm so I, was, I found that out because I, I got this email like, see you tomorrow. And I'm like, um, no, you won't. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just um, so anyway, I, I'm missing that. They're, they are streaming a lot of it. Unfortunately, I can't share these streams or what I learn on it. But um, I am very excited. I'm very excited to go out there, even though it's 103 degree heat. But uh, oh, it is wow. a dry heat, right? <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm I'm sorry that uh, there was some confusion about the travel dates and stuff, but I know you'll uh, you'll make up for it once you get out there. Yeah, and and you know I having fun with the kids today, so that's I'll great. That. So what's new with you? What's uh, what's happening in Farmville? Well, I am in the interesting situation where I'm. Let's see. Yeah. I, so this, this usually happens the other way around. Like you just mentioned, you can't mention stuff that you're getting right. to see on the stream. I actually don't have the thing I'm working on ready to release yet. And it's not catalog compare, which went out in preview last week. I was so excited to get that out the door. Um, this is another thing, um, an effort I've been thinking about for a long time, even years. And I finally put my head down. Uh, last week started working on it. Um, I'm hopeful to get this out in the next few days, but I know you, Frank, you're going to put this show out before then. <laughs> so, yes. So I'm not going to announce it yet, but if you, <laughs> if you want to keep up, um, certainly follow me on Twitter, Andy Leonard, uh, Andy Leonard blog is a really good place to keep up with what's going on in my little mind. But I have been working. I worked through the weekend on this, Frank, and that's unusual for me. Um, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I do stuff on the weekends. Don't get me wrong. I always work, but it's unusual. I'll say it this way. It's unusual for me to put in as many hours as I did this weekend. So, Well, I kind of know what you're doing, and I think it could be pretty cool. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks, Frank. Well, yeah, I tell you stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. Can't tell it in front of the public, but we can't let everybody um, know yet. But my goal is to get um, a significant chunk of it, a releasable piece of it, out this week, and I am also super excited about that. Very cool. So um, the other thing I was going to say was today I spoke to a bunch of uh, uh, data science grads from uh, the General Assembly program. Nice. Yeah. 
that was uh, that was really cool. Um, they're basically they just graduated and they're looking for work and they're looking for advice on how to get started. And um, I feel their pain or I felt their pain for sure, because uh, when you're looking for a job in this field, uh, it's not quite as bad as it was two years ago. Right. But, um, you know, the expectation is you have an advanced degree in mathematics. Right. Uh, in fact, you know, when I started looking for, you know, data science jobs uh, or AI jobs, I mean, it was pretty much like you have to have gone. Like the descriptions, job descriptions would even say like, no, you, you, you have to have an advanced degree in mathematics or computer science or, or you know, PhDs preferred, top tier schools preferred. It's kind of like. Uh, I, I had just have a four-year degree, <laughs> right? Well, you say just see, I, I don't, I don't even have a four-year degree. Frank. I have a two-year. Well, degree. it's all relative. It is, but still I get what you're saying. And I remember one of our guests, I can't remember her name, but I think you did a data point with her. I don't think she's been a guest on our show yet. We need to get her on here, but she's works at Microsoft. She's, she's up there and she basically told you on the data point, yeah, you're a data scientist. Oh, I know who it was. It was a year ago, and it was uh, – I'm going to totally botch her name, so I apologize in advance. It's Kristen Tola. Toll or Tola. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, she's actually, I think, Buck Woody's boss. I bumped into her uh, last year at um, uh, the Inspire conference. Right. Uh, very, very smart lady. Very cool. She has to be cool because she's Buck's boss. So. Well, that – alone and buck has been a guest on a show um i think i I'll, i think i'm safe in saying that that was the show we laughed the most oh absolutely uh, and if you haven't heard it go back and go back and listen to it and uh if you have headphones on and you're on like the train or the bus and you start busting out laughing you'll just be another crazy person. <laughs> buck is a hoot i think uh, a close second may have been darren lacy's show that was a good show too that was a good show. It's hard to pick our favorites. It, it you know, is. They're, they're all good. The Joel one was pretty cool. The one we just did. That was really cool. Um, Joel's been a friend of both of us uh, for, gosh, a decade? At least, At yeah. At least a decade, yes. A uh, really smart guy. Really nice guy, too. Um, that's unusual. Uh, it's, it's it's less unusual than it, than it used to be. It seems like people have kind of, you know, geeks have kind of, figured out how to get along with normal folks um, <laughs> and you know i don't know maybe maybe it's because um geeks that are I, i'll call them highly functioning social geeks have uh gotten out there more especially through things like podcasts and youtube and stuff like that uh you you see people who are you know they they're they're smart but they're almost normal <laughs> Well, I think that also speaks to to um, the nature of technology jobs. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Versus traditionally, traditionally they were the weird people who hung out in the basement. Yeah. And you know, I'm of the mind that the the brain is fairly plastic. So if you're around, if you have to be around people, you pick up those skills. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Whereas if you're isolated, like you know, basement. Uh, basically a dungeon with blinking lights, which is what IT departments used to be. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, you just didn't have to pick it up. So you, you know, you only have to, you only do what you have to do, you know? <laughs> that, that's true. At least that's my theory. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree, Frank. I think it's, uh, I think things have changed. And that's, that's why we're here because things are changing so fast. We're trying to bring right. guests on the show and, um, you know, get the word out about some of the things that are changing. And we've done, Frank, how many shows have we done? So we have like 130 something uploads. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not all, not all of them are kind of shows like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, 130 uploads wow. in 13 months. That's not shabby. Take a week. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, I think one of the things that we were concerned about was pod fade where, you know, you, start off strong and then you kind of taper off but uh that happens but uh we didn't really do we, we had moments where it's kind of quiet that's why i wanted to record today and get this out tonight yep yep uh to, to make sure people knew that you know we're still doing it some interesting things are going on 
In fact, your episode in, in, in coding, not your episode in a podcast episode says, but your adventures in coding lately inspired me to update the content tooling that we have kind of around, not so much around the show, but around the blog. Oh, nice. Which you saw that, I think. Um, the yeah. new version. <laughs> so. I have been so heads down, Frank. I don't even know what right. our count's up to, our download count. And I, I followed that religiously. It was like first thing I come in the office every day and, and pop over and see what our count was. I think the last time I saw it, it was around 57,000 downloads. Yeah, I think it was kissing 58 last time I looked. Wow. wow. Let's see. Here we go, people. Real lifetime statistics. There we go. Dater. On the link As now. we say in Farmville, dater. Dater. <laughs> You know, I pick on us, but we actually do talk that way. That's true. It is. <laughs> but you know, Frank, I don't have an accent. Everybody else talks no. funny. It's all relative. That's it. It's all relative. <laughs> Waiting for that magic number. I might edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because it's slow. Leave it in. <laughs> All right. So while that's loading, I think one of the other things that was special about Joel's show is that uh, that's what we're calling season two. That's true. Of data, data driven. That's the first, uh, not the first show we've recorded temporally, but the first um, show that, um, you know, we're calling part of season two. We changed up the questions a bit. Um, we're trying to keep them a little bit more tight uh, in terms of uh, time. Yep. Although with Joel, I don't think we did that. Um, <laughs> but um but let us know what you think. You know, we're, 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 we are data driven. We, we take a look at the stats. Um, you know, in the first year we were kind of surprised that the shows with just Andy and I were actually some of our most uh, popular ones, um, yeah. which fascinates me, me but too. Um, surprised me. <laughs> um, so we're looking to do kind of uh, more things. Um, I have a couple of ideas. Andy and I are kind of kicking back in terms of what we're going to do next uh, to make the show even better. But I think it's uh, it's important. Um, and while I am here, the final number that I have right now is 58,917. Wow. That's almost uh, 59,000. That is. This is almost 60. Yes. Wow. See, we know our maths, folks. <laughs> <laughs> did you say that with an S on the end? I did because I was watching um, – <laughs> So I subscribed to Curiosity Stream, uh, and they have a bunch of documentaries about science and stuff. And I was I was working out this morning, actually, because um, when I, when I saw the day was not headed in a good trajectory, it's like, now nah, I got to hop on the elliptical and watch some some nerdy stuff on TV. That make me feel better. That sounds like an excellent choice. Saved my day. So I was watching a um, uh, a documentary about um, um, maths. Maths. So. That sounds so weird to me. I, I think I finally figured out why they say it. And I all love to our listeners in the UK. Um, Australia. It's because it's in Australia. Yeah, mathematics. Yes. It's mathematics. Oh, so I when they that. shortened okay. it. That makes sense. Now that makes sense. Because it used to be kind of like when I'd see it just looks like a typo. And then you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I understand it. I mean, but it, you know, it kind of falls into that same category as saying the before calculus. Right. The calculus. The yeah. calculus. Which as is supposed to, supposed to the other one. Like... <laughs> well, that's how they used to pronounce it. They used to, whenever you would say yeah. you know, calculus, you would not just say calculus. You would say the calculus. And I don't know. It's got that ring about it. Like the Facebook. Yeah. The Facebook. Yeah. That's right. That's funny. That is funny. Okay. Of course, there are there are places where um, yes, total sidetrack. I know where um, <laughs> um, where um, now part of why I'm loopy, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh -oh. But um, no, no, it's a good thing. Okay. Um, so uh, like if you know, it's it's the Bronx, right? It's not just Bronx. I'm going to the Bronx. Right. Right. There's some places in, in English language that are like that. I know in German, uh, the German word for Switzerland is it translates to the Swiss. Interesting. Each fights. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, curiosities of language. Maybe maybe we'll start a podcast one day about the curiosities of language. That, that would be interesting. Yeah. I don't know. 
Uh, but uh, so the reason why I am, I don't know, loopy. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, is that I'm doing keto and I'm I'm doing keto like seriously hardcore. Yeah, I was inspired by Andy's progress. Um, I actually didn't recognize him when I saw him. <laughs> well, which I've is pretty funny. Steady, by the way, I've been like I've been plateaued for a couple months now. Which yeah, but you plateaued at a good place. Well, it's not bad. I was going to say that. You know, it's easy to get discouraged because when the numbers are just going bam, bam, bam. You know, it's awesome and exciting and all of that. And it's like I'm doing. I'm I'm cheating a little bit. I'll fess up. But you know, I'm even if I if I go a couple of weeks, if I get back into ketosis, even I'm mm-hmm. still bouncing in about an eight pound range, and I've been there since gosh the end of April. So, you know, yeah, but, but I, what's your total loss though? I'm still in, I'm still over 30 pounds. I'm, I'm still 30 to That's 30, good. 30 to 35 pounds is where I am depending on, you know, the day and water and whatever, but yeah, but you've been, you've been rolling for me. Yeah. So I, I decided to take it like really seriously um, and, and kind of uh, drop diet soda for my life. Cause I thought that it might've been blocking me. And based on the data, uh, that I've been tracking with my Fitbit. Uh, I've replaced the the diet soda with kind of black coffee, iced coffee. Nice. Um, so no sweet, no artificial sweeteners. Um, and I, I'm down about nine and a half pounds. Wow, Frank. And that's just in the last how how, how long? A week from when we're recording. The last this. week. Nine pounds. Right. And I, what? Nine pounds? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and a half pounds in a week. That's over a pound yeah. a day if I'm doing the math right. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, yeah, Frank. Wow. Now, what's interesting is it's because I'm logging the, my weight and in, in, I'm getting data. Yep. And I'm actually noticing patterns in the data. Patterns? That's crazy talk. Crazy talk, right? <laughs> you, you, once you go to the data science side, you, you can't let it go. <laughs> but I have noticed like uh, – and, and, and some people will be like, well, you shouldn't weigh yourself daily. And I say – more data, I think, is better. I agree. Uh, because right. I can kind of track it. Now, if I go up like a pound or two, I'm not going to freak out because right, my right. net loss is still nine plus pounds. Right. Um, but it also helps me, I think, stay more honest because I'm like, well, I'm not going to cheat because, well, I want to see what I can get tomorrow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, plus, I can also already see a pattern. You know, I, I, I lose a lot. Then I go up a bit. And then I go down. Right. Again, it's, like, it's kind of like a staircase type thing. Yeah. It's interesting to, to see. Uh, and that's just having that data, I don't know, makes it more real to me, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It does. I've had the same so, experience, Frank. I mean, I hit, this is the, I don't know, third or fourth plateau I've been on. Certainly the longest one. Uh, I started on March 5th. And as Frank mentioned, we're on July 16th. And I think the first week I dropped about 10 pounds. Um, kind of like you did this past week. And then, uh, you know, I was plateaued for a week, week and a half. And I dropped another, I don't know, 10 or 15. And it just kept going like that, you know. And then at the end of April, I was sitting at about 30 to 35 pounds down. And it's just been, you know, I, I, I like I said, I've been bouncing in that five to eight pound range, um, you know, since then. And I'll bet if I did something, if I... I'll tell you, tell you this. I'll bet if I stopped cheating, I'd probably go back into ketosis and I'd probably start losing more weight. And even in my latest plateau, I still weigh myself every day. That that still happens. Unless I'm out of town, um, I still weigh myself every day. That makes sense. It's a, no, I think it's awesome to get that data because, I mean, yeah. then you can start seeing patterns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's I understand the thinking behind not weighing yourself. Because it can be depressing if you, you know, if you find yourself gaining weight again, and it can, it can be the beginning of, you know, like a negative spiral or, or diet fatigue or, or what have you. And I totally, totally get that. At the same time as a data geek, I know me in numbers. I, I got to have the numbers. Right. Even if they go the wrong direction, it's exactly what you just said. When I see the, you know, the numbers, I'll, I'll throw it out there. I was 238. Um, I've gotten down as low as 196. Um, and this morning I was at 202. So, 
when I see the numbers good. go up, you know, when I see them drop below 200, that's kind of where I am because I'm so close to, to, you know, to 199. When I see right. them go down, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm inspired. I have a good day. When I see them go up, I have the exact same output, right? I see crap. <laughs> I'm gaining weight. Right. I'm over 200. I need to get back down. So I'll, I'll lighten up. Now, here's my latest challenge, Frank. Maybe you can identify with this is I will get so motivated about losing a couple of pounds so I can get below 200 that I won't eat. And that's bad in a keto diet. You have to eat. Well, there's such a thing as intermittent fasting. Well, true, true. Okay. Yeah. Which is what I'm doing now. I'm actually, um, uh, my record now is uh, 19 hours. Wow. And I'm about um, 15 hours into this one, which is what, which is kind of that dead zone of like the, between 15 and 17 hours for me is like, da, 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 da. <laughs> and this is why you're loopy. Now I get, I, uh, I wouldn't say loopy, but you know, yeah. I don't know. Well, you don't sound functioning loopy. under different, functioning under different parameters. <laughs> shall we say? I was going to say, you don't sound loopy, Frank. Um, no, I just, you just have like all this, and it's weird because it's, it's very paradoxical. If you do this kind of intermittent fasting thing and obviously talk to your doctor, sure, if sure. you do anything like this, uh, just, you know, got to put that legal thing in there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But um, you, your mind does feel clearer. Yeah. And it's, uh, I didn't start off doing 15 hours right away. In fact, a friend of mine, she's up to something like 48 hours. Wow. I'm like, my God, like, how could you, <laughs> Yeah. but you, you kind of work into it. Like, you know, 12 hour fast was once hard. Now that's kind of like, I try to do that very a couple times a week. So yeah. I try to do one long fast as long as I can go. Right. Um, typically on Monday, cause Mondays are Mondays anyway. So mm. why not, why not make them work for you? There you go. Um, so yeah, I, um, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to break my record today, but, uh, um, trying to get as, as far as I can go. Nice. Nice. Well, you know, fasting has some interesting history. Um, a lot of religions practice it because they believe denying the body focuses the mind. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could totally see that. Uh, it's one There's, of, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's one of the things that kind of happens when you start practicing keto, if you're just eating all the time, I'll, I'll use me as the prime example since, you know, I have uh, limited access to me. Um, I would eat an awful lot at night, like between seven and say nine. And I'd eat probably half the food I consumed in a day during that time when I weighed 238 pounds. Um, one of the things that happened when I started doing keto is I would have my last snack around six, 630 at night. And then I wouldn't eat again until, you know, 7.30, 8 a.m. So that was kind of an enforced 12-hour fast almost every night. Um, right. And what I, what shocked me about that, Frank, was how little I felt hungry. You know, you would think if you're not eating, <laughs> if you're used to eating, and then you stop, or, you, you know, first you're eating less, and then, you know, then you're, you know, then you're going longer periods without eating than you ever have. You would think that you would be really, really hungry. I know there's a lot of, um, you know, metabolic uh, science behind this. I know also physically your stomach shrinks and, you know, just the capacity for food goes down. So you feel more full more of the time. Um, I had all of those experiences, all of the above. And that, you know, even though I've been plateaued, like I said, for a couple months, um, that hasn't changed. That hasn't gone away. No, absolutely. And I notice now when I eat, I, I feel like I taste the food more when I, after a fast. Wow. That's, that's interesting, Frank. Really interesting. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why that is. There's a number of studies that have come out about boosting immune system, et cetera, et cetera. Right. It's, it, it's an interesting, interesting place. And I'm actually just, I'm living, the, I'm living the data science, man. I'm living La Vida data science. <laughs> and, you know, just, just, Locking the data, you know, um, I start drinking more water, which is definitely helpful. Um, I'm logging that I'm logging, you know, so between that, I'll be able to figure out if I do hit a plateau, like what caused it. Right. right. 
and that's why um uh, you know that's why i think it's it's important to be data driven i agree <laughs> so <laughs> how do you use a sound effect how do you use a sound effect nice nice stuff but um so yeah so it was interesting talking to those uh those students and and stuff and uh, it's, it's it's disappointing that you still have companies looking for these advanced degrees. It's kind of like when when C sharp came out. You know, they wanted it had only been out like two years, and they wanted somebody with ten years experience. Oh, C sharp. Don't we we see that all the time? And it's yeah. You know, some of it is. But just, you would think by now <laughs> that they would have. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and you know what? Um, we've had this conversation before. It's like if that's. You know, if that's what they're advertising for, they don't know the field. And that's not, right. it's not a requirement that, you know, everybody hiring people know every field, but it's, to me, it's always a sign of respect. Um, right. You know, if somebody's not asking in 2018, if they're not asking for four plus years of experience with, you know, uh, Visual Studio 2015. <laughs> right, right, right. Just, it's math, folks. You know, it's not that hard. And you can look this up. And see who Wikipedia is a wonderful tool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it just yeah, it just to me it's like it's, you know, it's like go it's it's almost it's got that smack of commoditization to it, right? It's let's just go pick somebody up who has ten years experience with this. And we've also talked about this, you know, about eighteen months experience. Um if your head's down coding like crazy for 18 months, if you started as a noob 18 months ago in a language and, and, yeah. and you've progressed. So, you know, there's such a thing as the experience in the same month over and over for 18 months, uh, you know, right. Then you have one month's experience, but seriously, you put your head down and you, you invest in education. You listen to podcasts, you read blogs, you, study and improve you do that for 18 months you're either a senior or pushing it really really hard in just about anything right no absolutely and and there's something to be said for just dropping everything and um going whole hog eat sleep and drink this stuff and sometimes that's the fast it's definitely the fastest way to learn but i find it sometimes the best way to learn I mean, may not always be practical, but yeah. I mean, it works. Very you know, focused. Think about people. Yeah. Exactly. And which I think in our world of uh, mass distraction, I think focus is the commodity now. Well, I, you know, I would say, I'd say you're right. Um, and as you were saying that, I was like, I know this dude who put his head down and got into data. <laughs> <laughs> Things worked uh, pretty well for that guy. Things worked out. Yeah, he's got this really cool podcast now, too. <laughs> yeah, with a really cool co-host. So if you haven't figured it out, folks, he's talking about me. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, when I when I got riff from Microsoft, you know, I knew some Power BI, I knew some things about data visualization and yeah. how to present and things like that. But the bulk of my skill was what wrapped around XAML and Windows 10 and, um, you know, Windows phone apps. Yeah. Uh, so my recent skills, I in the past I'd done much more interesting. Well, I done other things, not interesting, more interesting. But yeah, um, I still love Windows development. It's still cool. It's still fun. But um, I, my passion now is data. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, but you I mean you're right. I mean, it was just like I ate, sleep, and breathed this stuff. You in did. In fact, I think since we last recorded, I've got like three more certifications. I know, and you know, I was going to pick on you about it because you, you know you're slacking. It's you were getting a certification. Sometimes there you were getting like one or two a week. Right. Well, having a real job and stuff <laughs> is kind of a bummer for that. <laughs> but um, I actually just completed uh, reinforcement learning course okay. on uh, on um, on edX, nice. which I have to say was the hardest course. Hmm. And you're talking to somebody who's taken over thirty of these courses. Yeah. My data sam my data set sample is very considerable. Yeah. Um, and I think it was the first half was really easy and very I thought intuitive, but the second half was very, very heavy on the math. Oh wow. Kind of brutal, brutally heavy on the math, actually. Interesting. So for what folks don't know is um reinforcement learning is the idea that you can have an 
uh, an artificial intelligence, if you will, kind of train itself. That's um, interesting and scary. <laughs> it is very scary. If you want to be even more scared, um, you've heard of AlphaGo, right? Mm -hmm. the, the AI that beat the human uh, Go master. Well, check this out. So not to be outdone, they made something called AlphaGo Zero. Yeah. I've heard it referred to as AlphaGo Zero or Alpha Zero, okay. but let's just call it Alpha Zero for now. Okay. Uh, where it beat AlphaGo. Wow. And you know how it was trained? How? Zero human input. <laughs> so they set up two AIs or two players, basically, to play each other from starting from no skills, no human input, and they would improve and learn. And because they were equally matched, they maximize kind of their learning right. and their ability. So if you're playing a sport or a game or whatever against someone who's better than you, you're going to get beaten, right? right. That's not a if – if you're playing with someone way below you, it's going to get boring. But if you play someone who's within a certain amount of distance in, in your league, right. uh, you get better at your game. Huh. And that's basically what this did. Now, I don't know exactly how long they trained it, but basically after – I would imagine after a few weeks, I mean, it accumulated several lifetimes worth of go playing skill. Right. Just because humans have to, you know, sleep and eat. Right, right. Um, and things like that. And but so, but these computers chewed on it, you know, for a few weeks. But it was able to build to beat AlphaGo. Wow. Wow. Which is extremely exciting and scary. Yeah. Because uh, it took humans out of the loop. It's a very fascinating field. Reinforcement learning is basically kind of um, if uh, game theory and AI had a baby, it would look like that. <laughs> That's, and now you've piqued my interest. It's very interesting. I recommend the course, uh, the first half of the course. They did, I see, I'm not sure if the content got harder or they just had to rush this to production. Yeah. Because usually in these in the Microsoft edX classes, there's always um, there's always talk on the theoretical, and then some. There's all, always a, a, a follow on discussion and, and and practical. Right. This one didn't have that. Oh, interesting. And, and like, towards the end, it just got into some crazy math formula, and I, I think I um, I, think I showed you that. You did. Um, yeah. Over Messenger, like, but I actually kind of understood it. But if I look at it now, it kind of went away. <laughs> well, I looked at it when you sent it to me, and I was like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> so, so basically, it kind of breaks down like um, uh, in reinforcement learning, you have – I like to use the acronym STAR because mm -hmm. uh, it kind of works. So you basically have a state mm -hmm. at time T. Okay. Uh, and then you have an action, and then you have a result. Okay. And that's basically it. So if I have, uh, if you think of a tic-tac-toe game, right? right. Um, you can look at the board and then the board is the state, right? So if it's blank, that's a state. If there's okay. an X in the middle, that's another state right. at another at a different time. Okay. Uh, I could take an action and then my result, uh, I could, my, my algorithm will either be penalized or not penalized. Hmm. It very much mimics um, how humans learn, how animals learn. Interesting. You know, so if you ever, if you have kids, I know you have kids, yep. but uh, if you have kids or a pet, right? Why does a cat react to a can opening, can lid opening sound? Okay. Well, I do right? have that, cats. That, I know how that works. But, but that did not exist in nature, right? That's you know, true. <laughs> aluminum cans. Right. So, but they, they've learned to associate that. That's true. Um, same thing why dogs like to drink out of toilets, right? They're, 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 th they're thirsty. They find a source of water. Right. Their reward is that their thirst is quenched. So, have you figured out why why your dog that chews through like rebar? Oh my god! Have you figured that <laughs> out? Is that part of your reinforced learning? Uh, no, she's uh, she's an enigma. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, I have a Weimar on her, and they are wonderful dogs. Yep, but uh, whew, they have a mind of their own. Um. <laughs> And they do not like being left alone. Or, or so, caged. Or caged, yeah. Yes. So I like to say Weimaraners are not for beginners. <laughs> and if you follow Frank's Instagram feed, you can see evidence of this. That he uses that uh, tag, uh, Wyme Crime. Wyme Crime, yeah. Apparently it's a known thing for this breed. <laughs> they just get into trouble. Um, 
it's uh some pretty funny stuff on there she's a beautiful dog though she is a beautiful dog she's sweet um she's just very devious mm-hmm. so um yeah but i mean that's a great example like she can learn how to do things because she she'll keep trying something yeah um until it works it's it's, it's it, or it's just inter- interesting to see how those algorithms work and there's actually like um uh, I'm going to write an MSDN article about kind of reinforcement learning. Cool. The first one's going to have to be theory because there's a lot of kind of game theory that the ordinary person doesn't know. Right. And um, uh, it's just, uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thought experiment. And, and I don't know, is it uh, very serendipitous? That's your $10 word for the day. Wow. Um, it's a nice coincidence that I picked up uh, on Audible the um the selfish gene yeah we were talking about that book because it uh the first part of it at least uh really impacted you yeah i'm about halfway through and it, it it's it it was like he you know he was talking about how animals evolve and how genes kind of work and um sounds an awful lot like a machine learning algorithm yeah. like or a, an an, or an rl algorithm and probably because those are modeled after natural biological processes. Uh, but there's also evolutionary AI, which is very similar to reinforcement learning that is in that sense. So the idea behind the selfish gene is that um, the genes are kind of building uh, our DNA builds what he calls survival machines, AKA animals mm-hmm. that can help propagate those genes. That's basically it. And the reason why it works is that because after so many generations, the only genes that are left are the ones who propagated themselves. Interesting. Now it might sound like a circular argument, but it kind of works. It's a, it's a very interesting read. Yeah. Yep. Um, the audible audible book without a credit is uh, it was kind of expensive, but I got it cause it was a two for one deal, but because audible is a sponsor, full disclosure. Yeah. Um, you can get one free audit audio book from audible um, just for being a data driven listener. And what's that URL again, Andy? It is the data driven book.com. There you go. So you'll get a one free audible audio book and then you'll probably get as hooked as I am on audio audio books. I love audio books. Um, I listen to them a lot when I'm traveling. I have not been traveling a lot lately and um Lots of reasons for that, but uh, all good. And it's allowed me to, uh, you know, to spend time here working on cool projects. Um, What's really cool is the app, even the Windows app does it. Yep. And I know the a- Android one does. It actually logs your stats. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just swipe over to um, um, to where it is and actually tell you how many hours you listen total, how many hours per month, how many titles you bought. So I think for me, since 2000, 2016, I got one audio book. I think it was a Grant Cardone book. Uh, not surprising. Um, and 52 books, basically, between 51 books, if you count the – so between 2017 and 2018 wow. so far. Wow. Yeah. It's addicting because it's, it's great because, like, you know, I like podcasts. Don't get me wrong. I love pod- – obviously, I'm a podcaster. Yeah. But just sometimes you just want to have a consistent narrative across, you know, a long drive. Oh, absolutely. And I, I love it when authors read their own work. I mean, they are not that is the best. They're, they're not professional speakers, um, although some of them are. But e- even then, the ones we listen to, Gary V, uh, Grant Cardone, yeah. they're always throwing stuff in to the audio, <laughs> the audible version, right. you know, that is not in the book. Uh, sometimes they'll flag it. Uh, most of the time, I would I would imagine they'll they'll say this isn't in the book. <laughs> right, right, right. Or like Grant Cardone will go on a rant against editors. Yes. Why would they change my freaking words? <laughs> and I said freaking. I know it might have sounded otherwise. <laughs> but um, and then there's also um, oh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just, I was just going to say, you know, when you talk about editing, uh, that never happens when you write a book. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
that happens when you write a PowerPoint presentation, please. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, I can't wait till you write the uh, the MSDN article. I hope I get to do the technical edit on it again. I was hoping you would, actually. <laughs> oh, I love doing that. That's uh, that is awesome. I learned so much from those, Frank. That's what that's what kind of keeps me up to date, especially in periods like this where I'm, you know, like I said, I'm just heads down. I'm not even on social media much. I mean, the only thing that's out there is like the normal. Um, well, I say normal, the the usual businessy type stuff, right? Where you know, I'm posting links to blog posts. And I mean, if you see anything that says reading, um, that's I've taken a five minute break and opened Twitter and, um, you know, saw an interesting link from somebody who is on there more than me, um, you know, and then I'll read that. But most of the time, and I, I mean, most of the time, I'm just not on there. Um, I will say, yeah, this. you know, go ahead. It's. Yeah, I don't think you're missing much. <laughs> I, I will. Say I, I, I say that I'm a heavy user of, of Twitter. I, you know, I think it's. Um, you know, the, the problem with Facebook is. Um, what's interesting is uh, somebody once said, I forget who it was, is that Facebook is the group of people you knew in high school, right? And the people on Twitter are the people you want to know oh, today. Okay. I don't know. I, I mean, it makes sense. You know, you follow kind of business leaders, at least I do, or celebrities. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and uh, LinkedIn is actually turning into be a quite an interesting social I media was, into itself. I was going to go there. LinkedIn is the one I spend the mo- far and away, like ten times the amount of time I sp- of time I spend on Facebook or on Twitter is on LinkedIn. Yeah, and I, I've noticed that pattern too. Like. I used to have, think of LinkedIn as kind of like this, you know, check it every once in a while. But now, if you follow me there, um, I'm Frank Lavinia there and not the night manager of a Home Depot in Vancouver, Canada, in case you're wondering. <laughs> the other That's Frank Lavinia. <laughs> other Frank Lavinia. Um, but um, no, it's, I find myself there because the content, I think, has gotten better. Oh, gosh. Uh, because it's, you know, my, my Twitter feed is kind of a mix of various things. Um, but the uh, LinkedIn is like, you know, they're talking about AI analytics, um, uh, a lot of interesting folks post there. And it's like, oh, this is, this is, this is my tribe, man. This is my jam. I hear you. I hear you. And you know, we've been, we've both been uh, doing LinkedIn video and yes. love the feedback, love the metrics that become available. And you and I both had the same experience, although you're getting like 10 X what I'm getting. The numbers are you know, you compared it to YouTube, uh, you know, eight, right. 10 years ago. I, I agree right. with that. I, it's just, it's amazing. And you can see the statistics right away. Um, I love that. I'm always switching it up and trying things. So I'll post something on YouTube and LinkedIn about the same time mm-hmm. and factor of 10 to 20 more. Wow. And this is because YouTube is much more crowded. That's true. That's, that's the reality. Does it have a bigger audience? Yeah. But its audience is also not necessarily business focused. True. You know, if I were coming up with a song, I'd probably do it there mm-hmm. or a pop song or something for a wider market. But since right. I'm talking about AI, that's not to say that there aren't AI uh, vloggers out there. Siraj right. Raval probably being the most famous right. Right. and entertaining. Yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how these mediums are evolving. Agreed. Um, and that's something that I kind of really thought about after listening to the Gary V book, the new one, Crushing It, which uh, he kind of goes into detail about that and how to do that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yep. But there's speaking a of podcasts, of- I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead, Frank. Speaking of podcasts. Speaking of podcasts, there's a podcast I think I got you hooked on called uh, Business Wars. Yes. Seriously, stop what you're doing. Look for it. Obviously, if you're driving, don't do it. But um, or flying a plane or doing any, operating heavy equipment, right? just like those uh, drug commercials say, right? That's it. Um, um, it basically they'll 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 break it out into like eight parts, say. So they'll they'll cover a, a a rivalry between two companies, right? So first it was Netflix versus Blockbuster. Yep. Uh, and then Netflix versus HBO. Oh, I'm still listening to the Blockbuster one. Oh yeah, I'm spoiler alert. Blockbuster loses, but um, <laughs> darn it! 
<laughs> um, but it's interesting, and it's also interesting. The audio production makes it feel much more like uh, you're listening to a radio drama, right? From like the forties or fifties. Oh, yeah. yeah, the production is incredible, right? And that's not something I thought would be that important. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but it is. Uh, it, obviously, yeah. good crisp, plain audio is important, but Absolutely. the way they do it is kind of it's 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 exquisite. I mean, it's just it's great, and and you know, I find myself, you know, it's a good program when i find myself sitting in a driveway listening just to hear how it goes mm. you know yep, yep. um uh very interesting i'm doing the nike versus adidas one now oh nice um so they it's it's pretty cool it's uh it's a great uh thing but one of the interesting things to come out in the blockbuster versus um uh or netflix and netflix versus hbo is how data really makes Netflix uh, differentiate itself from its competitors. So true. Yeah. And they were an early adopter of data technologies and advanced analytics. Yeah. Uh, you have to check out the podcast to hear how, why and how that made such a big difference. Cause my description won't do it justice, but uh, it, it's awesome. Definitely an entertaining. Listen, there's even a segment on Marvel versus um, DC comics. Oh, wow. And how that all started, which is interesting. I had no idea that uh, Stan Lee just took a job at his uncle's publishing company. <laughs> like that's literally where it started. Marvel was a small operation, and uh, he he he. But after being there like twenty years, he completely upended it. Wow. And uh, which is inspiring on a couple of levels oh, is yeah. that you could be somewhere for twenty years and do the same thing day in day out, but you could still reboot and refresh it yeah man so that's all i got um just want to let folks know i will be doing hopefully doing a lot of data points uh while i'm out in vegas um uh the conference i'm going to is internal only microsoft yeah. so you won't hear any salacious details from inside the conference floor but i do know there's a lot of interesting folks that are out there this week so uh if i bump into them i'll uh, be sure to interview them Nice. Well, also, I'll point people to the data point that you alluded to. Uh, Frank did uh, did one on the two year anniversary of that moment that you had where you realized uh, um, it was the come to Jesus moment. I think uh, <laughs> I'm on a mission. Right, for right, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm on a mission for data. Is, is, is right. Frank's moment, and it's a great. Uh, it's a great data point. I, I recommend it. Uh, go check that out. Go check out the show with Joel. We had one just before that with William McKnight, also a great show. All that of them great. are great. They really are. I'm just, I'm not just saying that. Um, and, and like Frank, I'm shocked that we've gotten the listenership that we have on the ones that are just us. This is another one where it's just us. We'll Shocked see. and humbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great way to say that. Yeah, I totally agree. But thank everyone for, uh, we, we thank everyone for listening. Uh, it's a big honor. We love doing this. We're having a blast. And it's a, uh, if you want some real entertainment, go join like us on Facebook. Oh yeah. And you can see the raw. So what we do when we do the data points kind of quote unquote live is, I'll stream it to Facebook, and then we have a back-end process that converts it to MP3. Automation. Uh, and then we – automation, man. It's yeah. the way to go. Yeah. Um, so somebody should come up with a field just for autom- – no, never mind. Ah. Um, <laughs> a little slow on the uh, on the button today. Okay. But um, we uh, – <laughs> totally forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> that's twice um you need to eat I know. something frank <laughs> i do need to eat i think i'm gonna i'm gonna cap it at 16 hours so for real entertainment value gotcha. um definitely check out the, the the unedited versions of the of the data points they're sometimes comical i like it um, when your co-stars show up oh yeah my co-stars <laughs> especially the one where my co-star is doing jumping up and down that was fun uh, or the donut incident. The donut incident, now infamous. Yes. So definitely go check out our Facebook page. Like us there. And uh, we post fairly regularly there too. And um, we have an automated process that goes in. Uh, so how we do it is we do a Facebook live feed. And 
we then have an automated process. Once the feed finishes, it converts it to MP3. And then uh, one of us will edit it down, edit out those bloopers. Cause without the video, the bloopers don't add a lot of value. Right, right. Um, and uh, plus, you know, hearing kids scream about donuts is probably not conducive to data science study. Um, uh, yeah, so we do that and then we, we post it. But uh, the, the, the real entertaining stuff usually ends up on the cutting room floor, so to speak. But the raw footage is always available on Facebook. Yeah. There was one where... Um, yeah, I think that was the one I was talking about where I was back at the where I did the first data point, the exact physical spot one year later, mm. kind of reflecting on it. But um, yeah, my son, my older son decided, hey, I saw my little brother jump off these last year. I'm going to try it now. <laughs> I was like, can we go get a, can we go get ice cream? I forgot what he was after, but it was like, can Boys. I finish recording this first? He was like, you done? Boys. I'm like in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> Does it look like I'm done? You get to see some real A grade parenting right there. That's it. I hope I don't know if it's A grade, but you know it's a grade, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the stuff of legends. Stuff of legends. So with that, um, I, that's all I got to say. How about you, Andy? I'm out. Cool. So we'll let the nice British lady end the show. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. Don't just listen, become a data driver by going to datadriven.tv to sign up to join the community, access to special events, tips and tricks, and more. Sign up today at datadriven.tv.